All right, so here we go. Let's do it right, people. We got the intro card up. Taloxlin Sue's there with the Empire taking on Bilbo Bagos versus the High Elves. No, it will be finished next Saturday, Crazy TG. The top eight will fight in double elimination format next weekend. So, here we go. Round one. And uh, we'll see how this all shapes up. Let's go ahead and move this uh, blue flag over just a bit. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're back into it. Alright, so starting with the Empire here, gonna have Swordsmen. Looks like one, two, three, four, five of them, one of them being the Sigmar Sons. We have some Spearmen with Shields on the Empire left flank. We're gonna have two units of Demigriff Knights, as well as some Empire Knights. Um, for the fun of this army, gonna have the Sunmaker Hellstorm Rocket Battery. Falls out 99, thank you for the follow. And then we're also going to be seeing a life wizard, so a jade wizard here, with regrowth and earth blood. And then up in the air, we got Carl Franz, the man himself, on top of his griffin deathclaw. He's going to have Gollum Raz, the Reichland Runefang, Stand Your Ground, Foe Seeker, as well as Hold the Line, and Blood Roar because of that mount. Now, going over here to the High Elves, RC Rapsy. Thank you so much for the follow, friend. We're going to have a front line of Lothar and Seaguard. It looks like five of them. Then you're going to be backed up by two archers. We got two spearmen. We're going to have two units of rangers. Make that three. And then we're going to have silver helms for the cab in the back. Uh, we're also going to be seeing a mage of metal with plague of rust. A very nice pick here considering all the firepower here that doesn't have armor piercing. We got Teclas up on top of his arcane phoenix. He's going to have the sword of Hoeth. Uh, or sorry, the sword of Teclas, not sword of Hoeth. He's also going to have Potion of Shacroy, Enfeebling Foe, Net of a Mintok, Greater Arcane Conduit, Shield of Safri, Wildheart, and Kindle Flame. Over here, oh goodness gracious, I missed a bit of the carnage, but I saw the tail end of it. And that's Sunmaker, the Hellstorm Rocket Battery, just already raking up the kills and raking up the damage. Got 33 kills under its belt so far. But now the High Elves are in range, and they're just going to start shooting in a copious amount of fire, and uh, Empire's gonna have to play it smart if they hope to survive it. Sunmaker continuing to fire away, this time not getting the best connections, but still getting quite a lot of damage on one of these Lothar and Seaguard units. And it looks like the Empire is doing a good job of pushing um, with a very strong left flank, getting onto the High Elves, and uh, for instance, these Silver Helms are gonna be dead very quickly. Um, Silver Helm's getting hit by Demogriff Knights and Carl Franz. Carl Franz getting netted in place, but unfortunately there's nothing here to punish him. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, Carl Franz just going to be netted in place for a moment and then really nothing going to be done to him it seems. Over here though, the High Elves have begun working um, the infantry engagements in their favor. You can see here the rangers are absolutely trouncing the swordsmen in the combat they found. Oh no! Oh god, you see this is going to be a game losing play here if he keeps it up because look at all of the damage these archers stacked on top of each other. And that was two were full health and are now both wavering and close to routing. And suddenly the empire is looking really, really strong here. It's Soothsayer just setting the momentum, setting the pace for this fight, and the High Elves are no closer to dealing with that Sunmaker, and I have a feeling it's going to dish out all of its ammunition's worth of damage, and oh my goodness, everything it targets, it is just devastating. And the balance of power is going further and further in favor of the Empire with every volley from the Sunmaker. And here comes Carl Franz, Teclas is pinned in place by the Demogriff Knights, and yeah, this, if, unless Teclas can somehow escape this, this is going to be the nail in the coffin. God dang. 
That Sunmaker is just doing so much work. And Silver Bullets, who I totally missed, are in this fight as well, but they're kind of off in the back line, not doing much at the moment. Demogriff Knight's getting a nice rear charge into the Silver Helm, supported by Carl Franz. Looks like Terror should kick in on them very quickly, but actually they're just going to start routing. Regrowth going down, or sorry, Overcast Earthblood going down on top of the uh, the Empire pocket of units right there, and uh, looks like we're going to see Bilbo Bagos concede defeat, and Soothsayer is going to take that first victory in a rather convincing manner. 187 kills on the Sunmaker. That's value, especially against a faction like the High Elves, who generally have expensive armies. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, he just said German. Uh, so let me know what the flag is and I can try and update it. Yeah, the Sunmaker got flank shots nonstop there and that, that is wow, you get value on the Sunmaker. Yeah, I, I, I think it was an incredibly smart doctor. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, Soothsayer overloaded a flank, which caused the High Elves to turn in a perpendicular angle, turn at a perpendicular angle from the Sunmaker's uh, line of fire, and that just devastates infantry when they get in that kind of formation while the Sunmaker is firing in. That was rough. I like the Empire, the German Empire flag. Anyway, I, I get, I'm sidetracked. But uh, yeah, I mean, don't have too much to say about that battle. I mean, the Sunmaker won the game. I mean, and it wasn't just the Sunmaker. It was very keen play from Soothsayer recognizing like, all right, overload the flank, watch all of the high elf archers turn sideways to start shooting at that flank where the Empire was coming in so strong. And then the Sunmaker just killed everyone. Wow! There we go, Orion taking on Luther Harkin. Let's see it. Uh, yeah, Hadres and Kark, you guys got knocked out. I'm sorry to hear that, but I am looking forward to seeing the, uh, the replays, and you guys are two of my favorite players, so no shame. I'm sure they were awesome games, and even if there was mistakes made, no shame in that game. Yeah, ODM Loopy, just two rounds today, um, so it may be pretty quick. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, on top of those guys, I'm going to ask a few more people to hold. Oh, can we get Pacifist Warlord and ODM Loopy to hold too? I'm not sure if you're in there, Iron Thunder, otherwise I can shoot him a message once I finish up this match. Because, yeah, I still want to be casting for a few hours today. But... Without further ado, let's take a look here at the Vampire Coast being brought by Bilbo Bagos. Let's start with the infantry. You're going to have two Zombie Pirate Deckhand Mob, three Zombie Pirate Deckhand Mob with pole arms for that anti large support. We're going to have ourselves some Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob, looks like two of them, two Gunnery Mob with bombs, and we're going to have three handguns for that armor piercing power. We also have some Morngols here in the forest. One generic, and one of them will be the Night Terrors Regiment of Renown. Other than this, let's take a look at the rest of the field. And it looks like I missed three regular zombie deckhand mob, including one which is going to be the Tide of Skill, the ROR. Looking beautiful, as always, with their rotting corpses. Now, for the leadership, I think I'm blind. Or he's very sneaky. Ah, there you are. You're just being sneaky, aren't you? Oh, look at this. We got two mortars 
behind these trees, along with Count Noculus. And Count Noculus is going to be on top of his Necrofex Colossus. And uh, we'll see what he has. Captain Ross Moondial, Raid Storm, Arcane Conduit, Invocation of the Heck, and the Drowned Dead. Now, other than this, I think it's time to take a look at Soothsayer's Army with the Wood Elves. Now, for the Wood Elves, starting with the infantry as always, we have Eternal Guard with shields. Looks like we have one, two, and three of them so far. Make it four. He is going to have Wild Riders with shields on either flank, so it looks like two of them. Then we're going to have some Dryads. Looks like I just see one Dryad so far. Now for the Missile Power, we have Glade Guard, just the regular unit of them. Uh, one with Hagbane tips there, and then four generic. We're going to have some Glade Riders with Hagbane tips. They do magical damage on top of poison damage, so it's an important thing to remember. They can be quite useful against ethereal units if they're brought to the field. Going to have a Branch Wraith down here on the ground with Penumbral Pendulum and Earthblood with Call of the Wood. And then we are going to have a Glade Lord on top of a horse, Prey of Anathrema, Arrow of Kurnos, going to be on top of her. Now, last but never least, I think we have a unit of Way Watchers out here, Vanguard in front of the rest of the Wood Elf army. And we'll see how they're utilized. Very, very hot. <clears throat> Excuse me. High damage output on these guys, but you got to be careful with them. Make sure you, they don't go to waste. And here it is. The battle has begun. Count Noculus is going to start firing away, I imagine, as soon as they come in range. Got one of these Morgles over here by the mortar. I like that deployment, and the other one over here by the other mortar. Um, providing some nice mass so the deckhand mob with pole arms can actually get some work done. Oh! First arrow of Kurnos is down, and one of the mortar models has already been eliminated. So, going to be down to five mortars from here on out. But there goes the first volleys. Already doing some nice damage to these Eternal Guard with shields. And it looks like the second round is going to do a nice bit more damage. So, so far, both players are getting some good value. Balance of power slightly in favor of the Wood Elf player, though. Mortars are going to continue firing away. It looks like they may be shifting their targeting to the Glade Guard now. And oh no, direct hits there. Glade Guard are already wavering and well below half health. All right, the Glade Guard are in range now, and that's going to be bad news for the Bombers. As you can see, they are getting targeted very heavily, and now they're just trying to get out there as quickly as they can so they can start throwing their bombs before they're eliminated. An invocation to heck even going down on top of one of them so far, and uh, we'll see what kind of value they can get done. But right now, the Wood Elf's doing a good job of focusing them down. Oh, Penebral Pendulum! Deleting the zombie pirate deckhand mob and the bombs getting some good damage against the eternal guard. I'm yeah, the eternal guard with shields though. Balance of power started creeping back to the middle. In fact, it's now slightly favored to the vampire coast, so we'll see how this all pans out. Noculus has got to be careful because one thing I am worried about for him is that he's going to get lulled into a false sense of security. And uh, as the Wood Elves continue to target everything else, you know, eventually they're just going to turn their fire on Noculus, and that will be very devastating for him. There's a lot of Wood Elf archers on the field right now. All right, Wild Riders are in the back line doing some work, but the Night Terrors have been sent intercepted, some of them, so they're kind of tied up back here. But the majority of them have continued diving forward and are getting a nice rear charge on top of those zombie pirate gunnery mob. Um, another penumbral pendulum going down this time, doing some damage to the mortars and the zombie pirate deckhand mob. And the second unit of wild riders is still not engaged, um, so we'll see how they're used. Great storm going down on top of the hagbane tips. The way watchers are still pretty much unscathed. Oh, and as I say that, I jinx them, and a mortar lands right in the center of their formation. 
going to see the Night Terrors getting focus fired by these Wood Elf Archers as the Eternal Guard holds them down. And the balance of power is going back to the Wood Elves now in quite a serious way. All right, yeah, in the back lines, these Wild Riders are doing a great job of cleaning units up. They're getting shot right now by the gunnery mob summon, as well as the handguns back here, but neither one of those units are going to last very long, and it looks like the Wild Riders are just having their way with all of the engagements they get in. Night Terrors are crumbling out of existence. The other Morgul's are still full health, and they're back here on top of the Branch Wraith, doing some good damage to him, knocking him around a bit. But yeah, this is looking like it's going downhill pretty quickly for the Vampire Coast. Oh, a Penumbral Pendulum about to go down there, but it looks like he got knocked around by the Morgul's and once again dropped his Magic Cast. But may not matter at all in the end as the Wild Riders of Shields are diving into combat. Interesting that they're just going straight for it when there are Deccan mobs with pole arms here, but it just doesn't look like it's really going to matter too much. Earthblood going down here on top of the Wild Riders trying to help heal them up. The Mortar will crumble out of existence, and even the Deccan mob are having a hard time here. But Morgul's are coming over to try and intercept the Wild Riders, but the Wild Riders are going to be pulling out just in the nick of time, and it looks like they're going to be able to escape unscathed for the most part. Yeah, right now we're just seeing some really, really good plays from Soothsayer here. I have to give a shout out to Bilbo Bagos. Those mortars have done some devastating damage, and I just love mortars oh so, so, so much. The Night Terrors are still alive somehow. They're crumbling now, though, because they're getting shot in the back. Three models left on them, and I think this is going to be all she wrote when it comes to the Night Terrors. Waywatchers are going to continue running away. They're going to continue crumbling, getting shot by Glade Guard. And, uh, yeah, that should be it for the Night Terrors. But the balance of power is still not crazy one-sided at all. Relatively even, all things considered. And I think a lot of that may have to do with the Wood Elves getting low on ammunition. They have to make sure they save enough ammunition to kill off Count Noctilus. Because that would be a shame to see the battle slip through their fingers just because they used all their ammunition and then Count Noctilus soloed his way to victory with terror his artillery fire and invocation of the hex. Prey Banathrema has gone down, reducing his missile resistance by 22%. Arrow Kurnos going into him. Oh wow, that Arrow Kurnos is doing something weird. <laughs> that one went past him and did a full 180 and just creeped back to his leg. Wraith Storm going down on top of the Wild Riders. Doing quite a lot of work. The pole arms look like they may be able to finish them off before they crumble out of existence. In come the Glade Riders, and that should finish off the Zombie Pirates. Alright, Glade Lord is out of ammunition. I think she has one more Prey of, uh, I'm sorry, one more uh, Arrow of Kronos left, though, so we'll see if she uses it on top of Noctilus. But look at this, guys. The balance of power is now dead even, and with. Yeah. The Wood Elves are going to have to use all of their ammunition to try and take out Noctilus. But not just Noctilus, you still have the full health Morgul's here. who are doing very well for themselves, so... I don't know. Wood Elves look like they're in the dominant position to me, but this is one of those fights where... If the Wood Elves do run out of ammunition... Theoretically, and I could see the Undead winning it just because of un Invocation to Heck, Terror, and the fact that they aren't... Uh, they're unbreakable, you know, they can't route. But given the current situation, I think Soothsayer is going to be okay. We'll see if there's any invocation and a hex coming down here soon. Um, a lot of the archers are out of ammunition, but you still have this Glade Guard back here with nine chevrons that has about half ammunition left. And these guys, although they're low on ammunition, should be able to knock out Con Noctilus if he doesn't get an invocation down on top of himself very, very soon. Nope, Prey Vanathrema going down once again. Now Count Noctula is getting focus fired. He's crumbling. Oh no, just kidding. He's critical. Critical binding. But it doesn't matter. Bilbo Bagos is going to concede defeat. We're going to see another 2-0 victory this time to Tlaxlan Soothsayer.
Getting in some crazy good kills across the board here. Those wild riders. Mm, gotta love them. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I saw somebody in chat mention the lack of deck gunners. I did find that interesting as well. I usually like some deck gunner action here since the outrange the wood elf skirmishers. But um, the mortars I definitely love. And I can see Count Noctilus making sense here on top of his uh, big old Necrofix Colossus just because, you know, he gives him that artillery power, bigger HP pool. But um, all in all, you know, Soothsayer just really playing on point today. He's playing it to win it, and uh, I think we're just seeing, you know, man at the top of his game continue to execute to near perfection.